Hello, and welcome to the first video for CIS 220. Today we are going to be looking at navigating a Unix system via the command line. Getting around on the command line can seem a little intimidating if you haven't used it before, but it's really not too difficult. Just like getting around in the real world, there are a few things you need to know to navigate the system. Where you are, where you can go from there, and how to get from point A to point B. It helps to know where you want to go, too, unless you just feel like wandering aimlessly. If you've already logged into the Mercury server, the screen you are looking at should be familiar. This is the terminal on the Mercury server. The terminal is a completely text-based way of interacting with the computer. Instead of clicking on icons to launch programs or navigate to different folders in the machine, we type commands at the prompt and the computer will execute those commands and give us text-based feedback. This is the standard way of interacting with a Unix or Linux server, so it's important that we're comfortable working on the command line. Most of the work we do in this class will be focused on smoothly operating in the terminal. Let's start by getting our bearings. When I talk about knowing where we are on the computer, I'm primarily talking about recognizing the current Active Directory and being able to see what files and folders are in that location. There are some hints about the current location contained in the prompt, the text to the left of where the cursor is waiting for input. First, it lists my current username, Jeremy, and the name of the computer I am using, ACCLLX01I. This is actually the Mercury server, but the internal name assigned by ACC is different from the address we use to connect to the server. As part of the prompt, there is also a tilde character, the little wavy line, that indicates the current directory. On the Linux command line, the tilde indicates the current user's home directory. So in all, the prompt is telling me that I am logged into a computer named ACCLLX01I as a user named Jeremy, and I am currently in my home directory. To see the full address of my current location, I can use the PWD command. PWD stands for Print Working Directory, and it does just what it says. To issue the command, I type PWD and press Enter. Note that capitalization is significant when typing commands at a Linux prompt. The computer will respond by printing the full path of my current location. I am in the directory slash home slash Jeremy. This tells me that my current folder is a folder called Jeremy that is inside a folder called home that is located directly under the root directory of the computer. The first slash indicates that root directory of the computer. Unlike the Windows operating system, Linux and Unix do not have drive letters. Every folder, even those on different drives, will all fall under the same root directory. If a slash has no other text preceding it, then it will always represent the root directory. Further slashes in the path act as separators between file and directory names. File or directory names that are further to the right are considered to be inside the directory immediately to its left. In this case, home is inside the root directory and Jeremy is inside home. We could also say that Jeremy is a child of the home directory, and the home directory is its parent. To see what files or folders are located inside our current work, working directory, we can use the ls command. This gives me a list of files and directories. On the Mercury server and most modern Linux installations, this is color coded by default. The blue names are folders, the green name is an executable file, and the gray names are regular files. If you try this on your own Mercury account, you're not likely to see anything. Your home directory will be empty until you have created some files. Unix commands can typically take options that modify their behavior. One of the most common options used with the ls command is dash l. So ls space dash l, which gives a long listing. This will show us additional information about the files and folders we're looking at. We'll go over what all this information means later. Right now the important thing is that you can modify command behavior with an option. When we have a screen full of information like this, we'll often want to remove some of the distracting clutter from the screen before we proceed. We can do this with another simple command. Just type clear and press enter. When we want to change our current working directory, we can use the cd command. The cd command changes our current working directory. Most often we will modify this command by giving it the path to the location we would like to become our new working directory. I'm going to change the root of the computer by typing cd space slash. Notice that my prompt change. It no longer has the tilde since I'm not in my home directory. Now it has a slash indicating that I'm on the root directory of the computer. It's very common to take a look around by typing ls when you've changed to a new directory. 
If I do that now, you'll see that there are a large number of folders in the root directory. Most of these folders are common to any Unix slash Linux distribution and have well-known meanings to someone familiar with the system. Your reading assignment for this week includes a table that lists the uses for a number of common folders. You should at least familiarize yourself with them. For now, let's change into the bin directory. This folder contains executable files. You can type cd space bin to change to that directory. My prompt has changed again. And if I do an ls in this folder, I'll see lots of green files indicating that there are many executables in this location. If I want to go back to the root, I could type cd space slash again, but we're going to take a slightly different approach. To change to the parent of my current directory, I can type cd space dot dot. This is something you'll use a lot as you navigate the system. Let's go into the etc, etc directory now. This folder contains configuration files for various applications. So if I come in here and then do a listing, I see a lot of different files and directories. Let's change into the httpd directory. Which contains configuration files for the Apache web server. When we look at what files are in here, we'll see another set of directories. Let's change into the comp directory. Remember, if we want to see where we are in the file system, we can type pwd to print the working directory. So now we're in slash etc slash httpd slash conf. From here, let's remind ourselves what directories are in the root. I can do this by typing ls space slash. I can look into a directory with the ls command without making that directory the default. I can also change directly to a directory in that location by typing the full path. For instance, I can go back to the bin to go change back to the bin directory. I can type cd space slash bin. When I specify a full path beginning with the root directory, it is called an absolute path. Paths that don't start with the root are known as relative paths. If I run the ls command again, you can see that I'm back here in the bin directory. If I want to get back to my home directory from here, I can just type cd space tilde or just the cd command by itself. No matter where I go on the system, home is only one command away. There is one other trick I want to show you before we end this video. Tab completion. There's obviously a lot of typing done at the command line, and typing out full directory names is prone to errors. Tab completion lets us move around much faster and reduces errors by minimizing the typing we need to do. Let's say I wanted to change into the se linux directory that's immediately under the root. Instead of typing cd space slash se linux, I can type cd space slash se and then press tab. Since there are no other directories in the root that begin with the letters se, linux will automatically complete the directory name for me. Then I can press enter and execute the command just as I would any other command. This may seem small now, but in the long run it saves a lot of trouble. This is an introduction to just sort of the, the bare bones of navigating around a Linux system, but you will use these commands a lot, so make sure that you understand how they work and that you understand the concept of relative and absolute paths.